And good morning, everyone. My name is Brian Ritter. I will be your host for this morning's show, coming to you live from the scenic studios here on the east end of the Memorial Highway, known as the Strip here in Bismarck, Mandan. Good morning, everyone. I'm joined today by my guest and the guy who gives me ulcers on a frequent basis, <laughs> the president of the Bismarck, Mandan Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Kelvin Hollett. Good morning, Brian. Nice to see you today. Don't. Don't say that like you mean it, because I can see right there. You know, you know, I was here last Thursday sitting in this very same spot because I thought we were on last week. You know, I can't, I can't help the fact that I send faulty emails, but I'm sure Jim was here too. And we're, all, yes. and we're joined as always by our producer, Jim. Jim, we didn't get a, talk, we didn't get a chance to talk before the show. What is our musical theme going to be today? I haven't the slightest idea. Boy, Jim, we've only got like five minutes of the first break. How so- about, I'm just off the top of my head, remember the group The Birds? I do remember the birds. Mr. Tambourine Man. Let's okay. go with the birds today. There we go. We're going bir- I like that we're, one. We're going with the Because birds will be flying south very soon. That's a fact. <laughs> as long as the snow doesn't fly. Today on the Dakota Housing Network, again, Kelvin's going to join us. And we're going to be talking about uh, some very exciting developments in mm-hmm. Bismarck Band and some very exciting things that the Chamber of Commerce is working on. But we're going to start off today's show like we do every show. Uh, by talking about Bismarck Bandan by the numbers. Uh, if you will log on to our organization's website, the Bismarck Mandan Development Association at www.bmda.org, you will find what's known as the Economy at a Glance. And the Economy at a Glance is a collection of economic indicators around Bismarck and Mandan. And that's important because, I think as Kelvin knows, right now everyone's got a story. Everyone's got an anecdote or an example of how Bismarck Mandan is growing. And it's obvious when you drive around town what you see. But it's not always as easy or as evident to see what are the hard numbers behind that growth. And so these collection of indicators give us a good idea of that growth. We start off, what's the number one topic, Kelvin, everyone asks us about? Uh, workforce development, workforce talent, attraction, and retention. It there it is. He, he hit it on the head, didn't even look at my script. The size of the workforce is, in fact, getting bigger. Now, Bismarck Mandan, between the two cities and the two counties, there's about 3,400 to 3,500 open jobs. That is good for a roughly 2.9% unemployment rate right now, which is still one of the lowest in the country. It also shows us, also compares to the state's unemployment rate, which is about, oh, 3.5%, 4%, actually about 32 Another thing we always ask about is, aside from the workforce, what, I mean, how much money is being spent mm-hmm. in our economy right now? When you look at uh, sales tax collections, that's probably the best indicator. I mean, I know, Kelvin, you get asked by retailers a lot, uh, if they're considering Bismarck Mandan, mm-hmm. how much money is being spent in the economy. And I think the pretty easy answer is a lot. Yeah, it is. You know, it's it's been interesting to watch over the last six to eight months because I think a lot of people really felt like with the slowdown in the oil that that was going to have a... Uh, dramatic impact on our community. And I think what we've seen is that, yeah, there has been some impact on our community. It's probably leveled off. Um, instead of the straight up growth curve that we were on, we've we've uh, actually leveled a bit and we're kind of getting a chance to get our arms around some of the um, some of the infrastructure issues and some of the other challenges within the community. And so, um, so you know, we still have a uh, a very vibrant economy, and part of that, uh, as you always talk about, is because we have such a diversified economy in Bismarck, Mandan. So, so yeah, um, you know, uh, it is uh, it has been fun to watch, and and it is obviously still um, a very dynamic and growing uh, community. If you've if, if you've heard a presentation from us in the past, or you've been in our office, uh, our marketing and research director Judy Souter is always very fond of reminding me to take a look at the long view. And yes. Not just compare month to month, year to year. In fact, if you look at our economy at a glance, uh, Judy includes a note that says there are large monthly swings when you look at sales tax collections. Don't compare one month to yes. one month. If we look back, even if you go all the way back to 2002, 2003, this economy was really spending about a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. We did about a billion dollars in total taxable sales and purchases, mm-hmm. which as you know is what everyone always asks us for. This last year, we did about 2.2 to 2.3 billion dollars mm-hmm. and you think about that for a moment for, and for some perspective it took our community's entire history to get to that one point where about a billion dollars right and remember at that point what started happening around then all of a sudden we had Kohl's and best buy and that whole yeah had a whole bunch of retail show up about a million and a half square feet that's right and it showed up in one in kind of one shot mm-hmm. well then we crossed two billion and what happened we get a whole nother shot of retail coming up whether mm-hmm. it's southeast Mandan or north bismarck uh that's significant growth and so I think we're always quick to caution people that, yes, it might feel slower, but it's because you're used to going 80 miles an hour. <laughs> that's, just, that's just the way it is. It feels slower because it maybe is. But yeah. It's not a bad thing. Yeah. It's not a bad thing because guess what? We're still growing. 
you, you know, if you look at even another indicator, I know I worked about this later in the show with Kelvin here because the Chamber of Commerce has been very uh, active in air service recruitment and had some very great successes. But if you've been out to the Bismarck Airport lately, you know that's a different world than it yeah. was. Good luck on finding a spot to park. You got people parking in the grass, yeah. local car places, <laughs> parking almost out to airport road. It's pretty incredible. When you look at the passenger boardings, July of last year, this is the most recent numbers. We look at July 20, 2014, about 21,700 boardings. July of 2015, that number had jumped to 23,600 boardings. I mean, that's that's a lot of boardings. And you look year to date, through July of last year, they did about 137. Through July of this year, we're at 147,000. I mean, that, and that that is really a strong indicator of the level of growth in the community. Yeah, it really is. You know, when you have people that are utilizing the um, air services, and I, you know, I flew on uh, actually I was on Frontier here uh, a couple of weeks ago to Denver, and uh, there was not an empty seat on the plane. Um, I'm going to actually be on Delta here uh, this weekend, um, headed to uh, a quick set of meetings. Um, when I when I clicked on to uh, pick my seat. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't options. really a there wasn't really a seat to pick. So uh, and I'm, I'm yeah, with Kelvin, because we my wife and I just booked booked a flight, and we're flying out at five a.m. I mean, <laughs> that sun, that lovely flight. The sun hasn't even <laughs> thought about rising at five a.m. And we're on we're going to be in a plane, and that's one of the biggest flights of the it day is. out of, out of yeah. Bismarck. That flight is full. Mm-hmm. Again, when we went to pick our seats, you didn't have a whole heck of a lot to choose from. I really like getting out there at three thirty in the morning. By the way, no, Kelvin's a liar. <laughs> So we're as Jim promised you earlier in the segment, we're going to go out with the birds right now, and we'll come back. We're going to talk about prairie fire. Coming back to you on Super Talk twelve seventy. Right now, fifty seven. Get the app called Radio Pup for your iPhone and take us everywhere you go. Bismarck and Mandan's own Super Talk twelve seventy. Woke up this morning with light in my eyes, and then realized. And we're back here on the Dakota Housing Network on Super Talk 1270 AM. Producer Jim is going with the birds today. Now, I can see his screen from where I'm standing. Is that Mr. Spaceman? Mr. Spaceman. Jim, are we going to have enough birds tunes to go through oh, four yeah. segments? Plenty of, yeah. We've got plenty of them, he says. Well, we're back here. My guest today is Kelvin Holt, the president of the Ch- Bismarck Mandan Chamber of Commerce. And we just got done talking about <clears throat> the, the recent growth that are... You know, it's not actually not all that recent anymore, is it? Mm-hmm. No, it's really not. I mean, we can't say it's a really a passing. The continued growth. The continued growth <laughs> of Bismarck Mandan, and and we talked about passenger boards. We talked about the number, the amount of dollars being spent in our community. But one of the driving factors beyond just the diversity and beyond the oil and gas impact has really been the emergence of our community startup, community, mm-hmm. the emergence of our community's entrepreneurs. Why don't you talk about that a little bit? You know, it really has. It was back in, uh, I believe it was about 2008, 2009, uh, MD Resources hired a couple of interns for me one summer, and we did some research on entrepreneurship and put together a really interesting report. And I think after we all read that report, we went, hmm, we're not quite there yet. Um, and, and so we've watched the evolution um, of entrepreneurship in our community over the course of the last uh, really seven or eight years. And then Brad Feld came out with his book, and I know you've read it and I've read it, and it talks about this idea of startup communities and the leaders and the feeders. And that was the piece that when we looked at uh, the the overall structure in 2008 that we were we really hadn't quite developed yet was that leadership group within the entrepreneur community that was going to lead the effort. Um, because as you know, chambers of commerce, development associations, we've all tried it in the past, and it just never worked. That's what they teach you in school. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so we've really seen that um, take off in our community, and you have started Bismarck, and you have the Million Cups, and those sorts of things happening. And so, um, as we looked at that, and as we've talked with uh, you and the folks at the State Department of Economic Development, um, we really felt like that there was an opportunity for um, our community to step up now and fulfill that role of being a feeder and inspiring innovation within our community, um, talking about the importance and really um, helping the community understand um, how we move forward and, and develop an on- entrepreneurs. And so um, the Prairie Fire Conference is coming up here uh, October uh, 24th uh, in Bismarck and Mandan, and we've got a great lineup of speakers um, for that event. I think uh, um, if you have not seen the website yet, it's uh, prayforourconference.com. Um, you can see the speakers. You can uh, also register on that site. Uh, but we've got a great speaker lineup. Um, the anchor, uh, if you will, for the day um, is our uh, friend from Shark Tank, uh, Mr. Damon John. 
uh, will be here, and I think uh, everybody that watches Shark Tank knows uh, his background, uh, sort of uh, beginning um, with a small sort of idea of a clothing line, um, and now being uh, really probably one of the premier branding um, uh, companies in America. Um, so he's actually going to be here to speak in the afternoon. We have Kristen Hadid. Um, who is an entrepreneur that started a company um, that utilizes college students um, as a maid service. It's a great speaker. It's a, Yeah, great speaker, um, a great story. Brad Feld uh, will be coming in via video conference. Um, unfortunately, he could not get here, but uh, he did agree to video conference in on the 24th. And he's going to be talking about uh, you know your role in a successful startup company and really going through this idea of how do leaders and feeders work and, and um, how do you really make your community successful. And we're kicking off the day, actually, with Governor Dalrymple. Um, the governor, as you know, in addition to being the governor, has been a very successful entrepreneur. Um, in fact, his family, it was interesting. I was reading um, uh, from my, uh, I was at my father's house in Kansas here um, recently, and he had one of the old Time Life books, you know, those ones oh, that yeah. are gigantic ones. That's right. And it was interesting because they were, uh, as I was flipping through there, they were talking about the Bonanza Farms, and they were talking about Dalrymple Farms and how Dalrymple Farms was employing a thousand uh, people. Uh, back in the uh, back in the uh, 1920s, that would still make them one of Bismarck Mandate. Yeah, it, it, it would exactly. So it was really interesting, and so um, and then the governor's been involved in Dakota Pass and some other things. So he's going to be talking about his life as an entrepreneur as opposed to his life um, as as a governor, and I think that's going to be a really interesting conversation. So we've got a great speaker lineup. Um, we've really tried to make the price affordable. Um, so that folks can come. Uh, and so uh, uh, we're at, uh, I believe, $75 now for registration. And that includes uh, your uh, registration for the day. And then we'll all also have breakfast and lunch and snacks and all of those sorts of things. So we really hope uh, folks will come out, uh, participate in the day. Uh, we put it on a Saturday. Um, so that entrepreneurs and small business people could uh, hopefully have a higher uh, percentage of participation than, you know, if we do it on a Wednesday afternoon in the middle of the week. So that's uh, that's kind of how the prayer conference, uh, prayer for our conference, is uh, starting to shape up, and we're very excited about it. Well, Kevin, would you agree that this does mark a change in philosophy mm-hmm. for our community in terms of how we approach entrepreneurial development? Because, like you said, for years past, it's always been assumed that whether it was higher education or chambers or EDOs, mm-hmm. things like that. Really, that we were supposed to be the leaders, and in fact, we're not entrepreneurs. I think both you and I would be the first to admit yeah. that we're not entrepreneurs, and so it doesn't make sense for us to yes. really be in a leadership role. We can be supportive, and we can do things like the Prayer Fire Conference, or help out with One Million Cups, or start up a weekend, or start up drinks, or whatever. But it doesn't make any sense for us to lead that group. I think the other critical point to, or the other critical thing for us to embrace is, because of the continued growth of our community, we've reached a point as Bismarck Mandan, where we are no longer dependent upon outside mm-hmm. investment really to spur the, our continued growth. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would agree with that completely. And so it's it's critical for us to look for, what I mean, what, are, what is going to keep us growing? And I think we've got a great group of entrepreneurs. I mean, Justin and Garrett from Today Made and Co-Schedule. You've got the Hoff brothers from Threefold. Yeah. You've got some great examples right now of entrepreneurs who will be a part of our growth going forward. I, I agree with that completely. And the other part to that is that there's a you know, there's obviously the job creation and those things that, that those folks bring to the community. But the other piece is that, and you see this in Fargo and you see this in some other places, but it's the energy that they bring to the community. And that's really exciting to see. If you you know you've been to Million Cups um, as well, and you know you see you know fifty to seventy five to one hundred people you know coming down on Wednesday mornings at nine a.m. To, to listen to somebody talk about their experience and take questions and and just that energy um, that they're bringing in the community uh, is really a game changer um, and a piece of the evolution um, as we transition from a big town to a small city. I think I think another critical point to acknowledge here is that that sort of community. I think is often stereotyped or typecast as mm-hmm. being a younger community. Yes. And that may be and that may be true. I mean, you look at a lot of the leaders and these these are young business owners. But a great point that was made at yesterday's uh, 1 million cups by I believe it was Justin Walsh, uh, age is not a requirement right. to be part of that startup community. If you have an idea no matter how old you are, what your station is in life, you've got a role. And and really 1 million cups and events like Prairie Fire and others are designed to bring everybody together regardless of age, regardless of what your current situation is. And really, again, bring together, create that critical mass. Yeah. 
It is, and, and, and it creates that critical mass, and then the other part is it, it goes back to that energy um, piece where, you know, it, it's fun to get in that room with Million Cups because there's so much energy, and they feed off of each other, and they exchange ideas, and, and I think that the um, co-working space now that uh, they're putting together, um, which is going to go above the uh, Toasted Frog, is going to be uh, a really exciting thing for the community and, and sort of another next step in the evolution of our economy. Let's talk about that briefly. I mean, the co-working space uh, is, it, it's not, it's new to Bismarck Manor. It's not necessarily yeah. a new development, but a co-working space in theory is a space, it's an office space where entrepreneurs uh, can come to work, but you don't need to lease it and you don't right. need to have a permanent presence there. It's kind of a pay-as-you-go concept. Because oftentimes entrepreneurs, I mean, you're bootstrapping it. I mean, mm-hmm. You're taking every, you're beg, borrowing, and stealing for every single dollar you can. And maybe you don't need to spend $1,000 a month or $500 on a, on a lease for an office space, but you need a place to go after work. Right. You need a place to go to start up. And that co working space is going to be really bad for, for Bismarck Mandan. It is. As I understand it, you know, you can, you can rent a desk or you can rent, uh, I want to be up here X number of times per month. I mean, I think that it really does open up um, um, something that we've been looking for in our community. There's, you know, in addition to, to you know, start Bismarck, there's also a women's entrepreneur group um, that is uh, really growing. I think they have about 80 members now. And so you really do see that um, that growth that's occurring. And I think the co-space is really um, that piece, one of the pieces that, that we've been missing where entrepreneurs can um, really in some ways have a professional um, appearance if they need to have a meeting, they can you know use the conference room, mm-hmm. those sorts of things. So I think there's, I think it's gonna be a really neat opportunity for our community. Now, if you take if you take the events like Prairie Fire, like and Kelvin said, you can still register. Kelvin, what's the website again for Prairie Fire? Uh, uh, I'm sorry. What's the website for Prairie oh, Fire? Oh, PrairieFireConference.com. Thank you. <laughs> so you've got events like Prairie Fire and One Million Cups every Wednesday morning, 9 a.m. down at Coda Stage. When you combine that with the co space now, with mm-hmm. co working space, you we really are creating more. To, I mean, increasing the collisions. Yes. I mean, which it's kind of a, it's a cliched buzzword in our business. I understand that, but we're increasing the collisions and giving those entrepreneurs from wherever they might be in Bismarck, Mandan, an opportunity to come together and create that dynamic and I mean, to, to change the, dam- the d- dy- dynamics, spit that out, in Bismarck, Mandan. It's, it's really a joint effort. It is. And I think the other exciting part that we've seen within our entrepreneurship community is that it covers a broad range of things. You know, you obviously have the tech company, um, which you've referred to with uh, Today Made, um, and they're um, doing some really interesting things on the tech side. But then you have the Hoff Brothers. Um, who are doing a you know a video um, company company. and and have been seeing some some great success and and there's a number of others out there and and then they've recently hired hannah haynes um to come in and be the first director of uh, start bismarck much to my dismay uh when they hired (laughs) her when they when they hired her away from me at the (laughs) chamber Um, but but she is um she is the, the a premier example um, of a, a young person that moved here from Minnesota, went to the University of Mary, was very involved in the in the um, education community, um, was the intern with uh, for us here at the chamber for a couple of years, and then um, was working for us full time and is now moving over. And Hannah talks very openly about how um, she's going to be a quote unquote lifer uh, in Bismarck, Maine, because she loves it here, and that's the kind of. Um, energy and excitement that we need in our community to address that workforce development issue and make sure that we attract and retain young people and professionals and families um, to fill our uh, to fill our open jobs. Absolutely. So the birds are going to play us out here on Super Talk twelve seven. We'll be back in a minute. Using ideas as my map. We'll meet on edges soon. Said I. Proud me, heated brow. So much older than I'm younger than that now. Right now, 57. You're never more than a few minutes from a weather update here on Super Talk 1270. And as I mentioned before the last break, my name is Brian Ritter. I'm with the Bismarck Band and Development Association, and it's the birds today. The musical theme is the birds. I think we should have Van Halen next time. Yeah, I like I like Jim, Van Halen. Jim is a musical renaissance man. Every time it's a different theme, and he has some varying tastes. Is that a, that's a fact, Jim? Yeah, we had the Beach Boys last time. That's right. Of course, it was thirty degrees warmer, <laughs> so it was it was topical and tropical. No Celine Dion. <laughs> wow. Michael Bolton. 
No, Jim's shaking his head. You can't see that on the radio, but he's shaking his head right now. So I was uh, I was at some of the garage sales last week, and they had a lot of uh, the old vinyl albums sitting around. You know, they yeah. always have those at garage sales, and there was a lot of uh, Kenny G, and. Uh, um, so, so how many ca- how many copies of Frampton comes alive? <laughs> well, actually, I always search through those just to see if somebody's mistakenly tossed in an old Beatles album or something that that you know yeah. um, take might, be, uh, yeah, might be might so be useful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so my guest today is Kelvin Holt with the Bismarck Band and Chamber of Commerce, and one of the projects that you've you've heard a lot about lately that the the chamber is very active and actively involved in is Five South. Uh, Five South is a proposed redevelopment of Fifth Street in downtown Bismarck. But I'm not going to go into that. We've got Kelvin to do that for us. And so, Kelvin, let's talk about the the who's, the what's, the why's of 5 South. Sure. Well, 5 South came about, as you know, after uh, the Chamber and the BMDA completed their strategic plans in 2013. And, and back to the original conversation we had this morning where we identified the real need in the community was how do we attract and retain young professionals um, and, um, and young families, quite frankly. And so... Um, out of those discussions, there were a lot of different um, strategies, that were, strategies that were put in place. Easy for me to say, you know, and, and you at the BMDA have engaged in one where you have uh, identified what are the type five areas that we need to find employment in. And you've been out um, advertising on Facebook and other social media to attract people to our community. And so we have a number of strategies in place. But we, what we looked at was, you know, how do we do a game changer? Um, and how do we really transition the community and, and set the stage for um, economic development, for growth um, uh, for the next 20 years? And so Five South was a result of those conversations um, that we had as part of our strategic plans and part of the prosperity agenda. And as you know, there's been uh, a lot of study um, of the Fifth Street Corridor since uh, I, the first study I found was done in 1980. And it's That's older than I am. It's, I, I know that that sort of disturbs me. Um, <laughs> it's. Uh, but all of the studies um, from 1980 forward have all identified kind of the same elements for that corridor, which is a full-service hotel across from the event center, some downtown living opportunities, restaurants, retail. And so um, what what uh, came out of that conversation was some conversations with um, some of our um, um, partners within the community, Bismarck Industries in particular being one, which is an a organization that's worked with the Chamber and the BMDA since 1959. Yeah. Um, to do uh, to help us with economic development, and so out of that conversation, we really looked at how do you, you maybe take on that Fifth Street project and do it from a private sector side instead of maybe what's traditionally happened in the past, which is a developer comes in wants to do a hotel and they ask for free land and free parking and all of those things, and so um, so we um, helped Bismarck Industries um, assemble a package to put together. Um, the development phase of the project and really uh, bring it to life. And if you looked at um, the study that was done um, by uh, uh, the most recent study that was done um, in 2013, um, that study I you know identified a couple of things that it said the city should do. Um, the first thing was to go purchase um, land across from the Civic Center, which is where the sidelines bar and coots and photography are at. And the second thing that it recommended the city do was hire a developer um, with expertise in these areas to assist. Well. Um, through Bismarck Industries and then Bismarck Futures, um, that's been accomplished. And so over the course of the last uh, really two years, uh, through ongoing discussions um, with uh, within the business community, the supporters of uh, Five South, and then conversations with uh, city commissioners and city staff, um, you've seen this evolution of the project that's now going to go to the city commission next week on Tuesday, um, which has uh, various components in it, but it's really focused on um, how do you create the entertainment um, living district in downtown um, that's been talked about for 30 years. And so uh, the project is proposed really has uh, four private sector components. Um, there's a full service hotel. Um, there is uh, apartments um, that's divided into uh, market rate apartments and then also um, what I would call more affordable apartments. And then you have a mixed use building and and you have an office tower. And so those four components are the the centerpiece um, of the development, which um, hopefully f- will expand out from there. Um, but it's really a what they call a development of scale to generate um, over a short period of time um, significant investment into a district that will attract 
um, uh, folks into that uh, into that living opportunity. So um, it's moving forward. Um, there's a, a lot of different components to it that uh, we can talk about, but um, it will be before the city commission next week on Tuesday um, for uh, for their review and discussion and um, and review of a downtown development agreement that would occur between um, Bismarck Industries, the developers, and the city. Kelvin, when we talk about downtown, what I know what you hear and what I hear sure. is parking. Yes. Whether you're trying to locate a business, whether you're trying to locate your family, whether you, I mean, whatever you're trying to do, it's parking. Yes. And, and especially when you go to the event center, yeah. it's parking. Talk about how Five South is going to address parking in, in sure. the area. And, and, that's, yeah, and that is one of the key issues. And if you recall back when the city had the vote on the, the expansion of the, um, of the event center a few years back, that was one of the main points of discussion was the parking. And so as part of this project, and, and I guess that's one of the one of the real challenges that there has been to address with this is how do you develop parking structures? And so um, today um, in, in that area, there's about 1,060 parking spots um, with the, um, the lots that are around the, the, uh, the event center. Um, under the proposal being brought forward, um, all of those spots will be replaced um, in probably a different fashion. There's um, two parking garages proposed uh, as part of the project. Um, there's development of some on-street parking. And I think in the end, there's projected to be um, some additional spaces that will that will come online over that 1,060. Um, that's still being reviewed and discussed. But uh, I think that there will be a positive net parking um, after the project's done. The other important thing, though, to remember is I think no matter how much parking we create, it will never be enough parking. Um, it's just that is just a fact, and and I don't you know whether it's this facility or whether it's a facility somewhere else. It's it's just one of those challenges. Um, so um, so you'll see the the parking developed, and 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 you know one of the points of discussions of this uh, of this development has been the tax increment financing, and tax increment financing is a tool that was developed by the state to uh, help communities do redevelopment projects like this. Um, where it's more expensive because you have ex- existing infrastructure um, that you're going to have to replace and you have streets that you're going to have to replace and all of those sorts of things. Um, and so tax increment financing um, takes advantage of the increased value that will be paid by um, those properties over the course of about 20 years um, to pay off the public improvements. Um, and so the public improvements uh, you know, include about um, 550 stalls roughly, um, of public parking that will go into uh, into the two garages. Um, it also includes the redevelopment of 5th Street, um, putting in 4th Street, um, which, uh, as we know, is not there today. Um, and then um, also putting in some amenities such as a downtown park and whatnot. So, um, so as you look at how do you do redevelopment, and if you want to enhance the parking opportunities around the event center and in downtown, you know, there's a, a limited number of ways you can do that. Um, you know, you could go to a vote on sales tax, um, which, you know, probably isn't going to happen. You could use property taxes, which we know is very unpopular. Um, you could, uh, you know, you could try to do a couple of other things. But in the end, um, what the tax increment financing does is really utilizes the property taxes paid by the four buildings that will be created to pay for the public improvements. And so, um, so the TIF district was really the best economic development tool. Um, I think that as the whole project went forward, that uh, that they found that would work effectively um, to do the public improvements. Now, it's you mentioned earlier. I mean, th- we've this has really come about as a result of the vision that was laid mm-hmm. out by the two organizations uh, previously, and, and a huge credit to Bismarck Industries and Bismarck Futures, which includes close to twenty five. Yeah, investors. twenty five investors. Yeah. Uh, which has shown significant private support for the project. I think what's, and clearly the BMDA supports the effort. Uh, we've been on record as doing so. What's intriguing to me about this, and, and you travel just as much as I do, if not more, and you've been, you've seen other similar, similar yeah. size markets and bigger, and we are so blessed in the fact that in downtown Bismarck, we have what is still the region's largest shopping mall, mm-hmm. Kirkwood Mall, an event center, and are downtown connected by the backbone that is Fifth Street. Yes. That is such a unique situation. I'm not sure that everybody in our community appreciates just how special and unique that is. Yeah, I would agree with that. And that's uh, been one of the interesting things as they brought this project forward. Um, and I know there's been a lot of conversations with um, various developers for the different components of the project. But, but that's been, um, quite frankly, one of the most attractive pieces. And they've all pointed it out um, that there is not another community probably between Minneapolis and Seattle um, that has that sort of a structure where you have within, 
you know, sort of a eight block area, um, the shopping, the event center, and a very, quite frankly, a very active downtown. And you're absolutely right. It just doesn't happen where you've got those amenities in mm-hmm. such a confined space. And when you think about it, if you start at Main Avenue, right by Fiesta V and the Peacock Alley, and you head straight south, it's a it's a two, three minute walk. And yeah. You've literally gone from downtown to the event center to the mall. And again, that's such a unique asset to this community. And if we're going to compete mm-hmm. on a national level for people, for talent, for workers, we have to find ways to set ourselves apart. And this is one of those ways. Right. This is a, you know, and, and while this this project is focused in downtown, I think that everybody that's involved in the project would tell you that it's really just an economic development project um, that is um, being um, promoted to enhance the competitive Um, of the community. No doubt. I I mean, you know, we look at Sioux Falls a lot. Um, They are sort of the, they are sort of the poster child for um, how you do things. And it was interesting. I was uh, meeting with their city planning director a while back when I was uh, down there for meetings. And uh, they have, I think, 13 active TIF districts um, in Sioux Falls um, that they're utilizing, not just in their downtown, but all over the community um, to make projects happen. Um, It was interesting. I saw Grand Forks was in uh, Fort Collins yesterday. Mm -hmm. Um, I was reading the Grand Forks Herald this morning that they were in Fort Collins yesterday um, walking through their downtown um, and they were um, discussing the utilization of tax anchor run financing and how it could be utilizing Grand Forks. So so this is a tool that's being utilized um, in a lot of places and really is a, a great way for um, those businesses to um, that will be being built in that in that district to pay for the public infrastructure. Absolutely. So we're going to go back out here to the birds. We'll be back for the next break here in just a second. Super Talk 1270. Right now, 57. Get the traffic and weather information you need anytime on Super Talk 1270 and online at supertalk1270.com. And we're back, folks. My name is Brian Ritter. I am the president of the Bismarck Mandan Development Association. Joined today on the Dakota Housing Network by my guest, Kelvin Hullett, the president of the Bismarck Mandan Chamber of Commerce. And we spent the last 45 minutes, believe it or not, talking about all things related to Bismarck <laughs> Give us Mandan. an open microphone exactly. and we can fill it up. <laughs> yeah, Jim, if you've got some time for this, we can keep going if you've got to fill some air. But we'll be talking about all the things affecting... Bismarck Mandan's continued growth. And, you know, there have been, been some efforts. We talked about Five South, the Prairie Fire Conference. We talked about the economic indicators. But there are some other things the Chamber of Commerce is doing uh, that, you know, that folks might not know about. And one of them is air service. Mm-hmm. And as we talked about at the outset of the show, at the top of the hour, uh, you can pass in your boardings, and through the first seven months of the year, we're up about 10,000 passengers. And you think about that, it's a lot of people flying through the Bismarck Airport. Yeah, it is. And, and I and I hope that we can attribute that to the new air service that we've brought in over the course of the last couple well, of years. You, and, and talk about that, Kelvin. Talk about what the Chamber has done. And talk about the sure. efforts that, that you guys you have know, and, and the Air service has been an issue I, since I got here 12 years ago. I know it's been a discussion that you've been engaged in since you took over. And it's you know, how, do you, uh, how do you get folks uh, to here from here and then how you do it at a price point that we can afford. Yeah. And so um, a couple of years ago, actually it was three years ago now, um, we worked with the Bismarck Airport and the Bismarck City Commission to um, get a um, um, to pull together a um, Min- the minimum revenue. Yeah, guarantee. thank you. I, I my MRG. my brain was freezing for I a saw minute. The yeah, turning thank out. you. The listeners, uh, I yeah, go. yeah. So we put together the MRG to recruit Frontier Airlines, and with that, what we had done was the business community guaranteed that we would buy three hundred thousand dollars in tickets the first year, and the city put up. Um, two hundred thousand um, as a um, as a part of the minimum revenue guarantee backing, and we never we never actually um, tapped into any of that. The business community um, bought their tickets, and, and Frontier has been very very successful. Um, so um, last year we actually it was actually right about this time that we announced the service for American Airlines. Um, they have been doing service to uh, Denver, and then also to I'm sorry not Denver to Dallas, and then also to Chicago. Um, over the course of the last year, and uh, and have been seeing good numbers. The Dallas flight is very solid, uh, with folks going back and forth. Chicago is picking up, and so, um, so I would hope that the part of the the, the increase in track of traffic we've seen has been the addition of those new airlines that we have flying in and out of our community. Well, and like you and I were talking about during one of the breaks, uh, it's a new experience now for travelers with yes. Mark Mand. And when you go to book a flight now. <clears throat> To have options, yeah. To have multiple options to be look at and comparing, and yeah, you're going through different cities and mm-hmm. you're going different directions, but you're no longer beholden just going 
one place or another. Yeah. We've got options for the first time, at least in our careers here. Yeah, you know, and it, it, you're exactly right. I, you know, I'm doing a, a trip to Florida this weekend for U.S. Chamber meetings, and and um, I'm actually flying Delta, but we looked at American Airlines to go through Dallas. Um, you know, and then in addition, I know a lot of uh, business travelers also utilize Allegiant. Absolutely. Um, they'll go into Vegas or um, go into Arizona, and then they'll jump on another airline. So, so it, yeah, it really has opened up to where you can you could price shop a little bit um, in looking at your air ticket, um, at your airfare, and uh, you know, on Frontier. You know, I fly to Denver on a fairly regular basis um, to to go out to Kansas and uh, see my uh, see my dad. You know, I'm finding round trips for $140. Well, I, I can't drive the 1100 mile round trip. You can't check your bags <laughs> for $140, Kelvin. Yeah. So, uh, so there really are some some great values and some great opportunities for uh, folks to utilize the air service now. And that's and that really is a direct response to comments that we had heard yeah. from our business community. Yeah. Because in addition to just the options, it was the price. Yeah. And I think I think folks have seen now with increased competition, with increased bodies coming to the airport, mm-hmm. prices have been all. I mean, I, I mean, I can't say they're great yet. Yeah, but it's gotten better. It has gotten better. It's gotten yeah. better. Yeah, and and you know, and if you catch the sales now, um, those sorts of things. I mean, you you really can find some some good um, prices. The um, you know, the, I know we had looked at a trip to uh, another trip to Florida here, and I think I found a round trip uh, to Jacksonville on uh, American for four hundred and thirty dollars. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's a good ticket price. That's right. So, yeah, so there's lots of opportunities, and, and I'm glad that folks are taking advantage of them. So the Secretary of the Navy <laughs> was in town yesterday. Yeah, uh, that happens every day, huh? Yeah, absolutely. You, you, see, you see a Secretary from the Armed Forces. Why don't you tell our <laughs> listeners why the Secretary of the Navy wasn't Bismarck Mandate? Well, uh, I, you, it, it, we got a call last week. It was kind of funny. We got a call last week and uh, from the Secretary of the Navy's office, and they said, "Yeah, he's like to he'd like to come out to Bismarck, Manda, next week and um, talk about the USN as Bismarck." And I'm like, "In person? <laughs> really? We, we can Skype, I suppose." <laughs> so um, yeah, so he actually came out. Uh, was here yesterday for uh, a couple of hours and uh, formally announced the USNS Bismarck. Uh, that boat had been named um, actually. Um, about a year ago, um, and we had had done some announcement of it, but he wanted to come out and uh, really talk about it, and and really talk about the impact that North Dakota is having on the Navy. You know, you don't, you know, you have the USNS now, which is going to be a high speed troop transport uh, or a transport ship, I should say. It's going to be about a hundred yards long. It can carry uh, th- up to thirty, or I'm sorry, three hundred armed, fully armed Marines. Uh, can carry a number of tanks. They're actually going to mount the first rail gun um, on on one of these boats. So uh, so it's really a cool boat, and uh, it can run up to I think I think the press release they never tell you exactly what these will do, but it'll go I think over fifty mile an hour. But a hundred yards. Yeah, away, that's a boat the size of a football field. Yeah, yeah, it's about the size of a football field. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, so it's uh, it's a really cool deal, and of course that comes on the heels of the of the USS North Dakota, which is the um, the submarine. Um, that we have uh, worked with since 2008 and getting it named and commissioned and all of that. And actually, the North Dakota just finished a really interesting mission. Um, they uh, had just got um, back from the Mediterranean, and they did the first ever deployment of underwater drones. And uh, they wouldn't really tell us anything about that, obviously. Because they can't really, tell, they you, can't really tell us anything. But uh, they were in the Mediterranean, uh, and... Apparently, they release these drones, and the drones go out and do whatever they do, and then they come back to the boat. And so, uh, so that was kind of, that was really kind of cool. So, so uh, not only talking about that, and, and I will tell you that North Dakota um, has really turned out to support um, the the submarine. I mean, when we did the commissioning, um, there were five hundred people from North Dakota there. It was probably the biggest. Um, commissioning that they had had of people coming from a state outside of like a California or Florida, which are based there. So it was a huge commissioning. It really made an impression, a uh, positive impression on the on the Navy. Um, but he also wanted to just you know, talk about the impact that shipbuilding has on North Dakota. Um, you know, North Dakota has about uh, 400 jobs um, that contribute into shipbuilding, uh, and um, it contributes uh, $24 million to our economy here in North Dakota. Um, from those folks that are engaged in assisting the Navy with uh, with development of their uh, various vessels. So we went to talk about that. And then, of course, one of the interesting things about North Dakota is we are totally landlocked. Um, <laughs> but we have um, not only a high percentage of participation in the military, but when you look at, um, in particular, the Navy leadership, 
You, know, you have Admiral Bill Owens, who became the vice chairman of the Joint Chiefs. You have Admiral Miller, who is currently the superintendent of the Naval Academy. You have Admiral Fowler, who was the superintendent of the Naval Academy. And you have Rear Admiral uh, Munch, um, who is actually from Oaks, North Dakota. Um, and so the, the, the level of leadership positions attained by North Dakotans um, in the Navy has been really, quite frankly, for a landlocked state and a small state, kind of astounding. What's interesting to me is also the the fact that you brought up 400 jobs yes. that are in the state of Dakota directly related to shipbuilding. Yes, you wouldn't have you wouldn't have gotten me to guess a number like 400 if you'd give me an hour and a half. I <laughs> that's two of us, and and I haven't had a chance. I'm going to go back and follow up with them to see how they quantified those. But but yeah, I, I kind of did the same thing yesterday when he said 400 jobs. I was like, really? Like, <laughs> what do we do? That's no, not mine. <laughs> do we build rudders?